introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Daniel. Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, federated instant messaging with uh, Java XMPP. Um, well, that's a pretty shitty situation we're in. Um, we have dozens of incompatible uh, instant messaging apps that all do pretty much the same thing, um, but I can't interchange them with each other. Um, and depending on where you live, you're basically forced to use at least one of them. So depending on your region, you are either used to uh, uh, first to use WhatsApp, like we in Europe, or in China, I guess that's uh, WeChat. Um, and depending on what circles of friends you're in, you're even kind of forced to use more than one of them, for example, when you're traveling. Um, and the situation wasn't really uh, any better like 15 years ago. Uh, we had other proprietary apps that just got replaced by our a new set. And um, well, that kind of makes you wonder, um, wouldn't it be nice if there was a standardized protocol that all those uh, instant messaging apps could use? Um, well, actually there is and has been for 18 years. And it's called XMPP, which is shorthand for the Extensible uh, Messaging and Presence Protocol. And um, that's actually an IETF standard and um, but, but the ITF standard is only the, the core protocol and then, like the name suggests it's extensible and those extensions are um, published by the XMPP Standards Foundation. Um, yeah, so my, my slide is actually taught called Jabber XMPP, so what's the difference between uh, Jabber and XMPP? And so XMPP is the protocol and Jabber is the uh, ecosystem of federated uh, instant messaging servers. So you can kind of like compare that to the web and HTTP, uh, where HTTP is the protocol and the web is the ecosystem of, well, well, basically websites you can access. Uh, or you can make the same analogy with um, email and SMTP. SMTP is the protocol and email is the network of federated um, servers. And the comparisons to uh, email don't end there. Um, users in Jabber are identified by username at domain, and usually uh, users on one domain can talk to users on another domain. Um, so XMPP was actually uh, fairly widely deployed at some time. Um, most famously, uh, Google used it in their uh, product called GTalk. And uh, Google even participated in advancing uh, the standard and created their own protocol extensions. Um, however, a lot of them have, have abandoned the XMPP services and switched to something else. Um, uh, most recently, Slack has announced that um, they are going to shut down their uh, XMPP gateway in a month or so. Um, so what happened? Um, if you can't believe them, the most common reason they gave is that um, XMPP doesn't really fit their needs and lacks features. And if we look at the situation from um, pre-2015, this was actually kind of true. We were in a situation um, where the protocol hasn't really managed to adapt to the changing requirements. So. Uh, you have to remember the core protocol was uh, developed 18 years ago, and at that time we didn't really have mobile devices. We didn't really uh, uh, had to worry about battery constraints. Um, people weren't really using uh, multiple devices at the same time, um, or um, people weren't switching between Wi-Fi and 3G networks, and. Um, the core protocol itself can't handle that very well, but well, thankfully it's an extensible protocol and you could in theory create extensions to solve those problems. And uh, when I got involved with XMPP in um, 2014, uh, we actually had extensions to solve most of those problems, um, but they weren't very widely implemented. Um, and furthermore, from a uh, pure user perspective, a lot of the XMPP clients had a very outdated uh, UI. It just didn't really feel very modern. Um, 
well, fast forward to 2018 to, to now, um, there is a next MPP client called Conversations, which basically um, feels and acts and behaves like any or instant messaging app. Um, you can send any kind of attachment, like you can send short videos, um, you can send voice messages, you can attach pictures. Um, as you can see in the screenshot down there, it has typing notifications. Um, it has read markers even in group chats and for uh, messages that you didn't send yourself. Um, for example, in um, WhatsApp you only see uh, who has read a message for messages you sent yourself and in conversations you can um, see that or, or if other people has, have read messages other people um, wrote. Um, yeah, if you're into that, it um, also has end-to-end -end encryption, which even works um, between multiple devices. And um, yeah, if you're not into that, you can simply turn it off, but it's enabled by uh, default because that's the safer option basically, but if you for some reason don't want to use it then it's just one click away. Um, well, uh, remember when I said it's like a, a providing independent protocol and you can uh, pick your own server, that also means you have to pick your own server and this can be a, a hurdle for newcomers because they have to A, download the app and then f figure out what server they ha uh, want to use and that you can use it with whatever server you want, but it uh, also allows you to create an account on the quote-unquote official server, and then it's pretty easy. That's, that's the welcome screen, and uh, when you click create account, it only asks you for a username, and that's basically it. And then on the button, it tells you uh, what your uh, Java ID, what your identifier is going to be. Um, but you don't have to do anything else. It will automatically create a randomized password for you and you just have to click next and it will figure everything out. That's basically all to say um, that um, yeah, conversations is basically as good or bad as anything else. It might be lacking a couple of features um, that some clients have, but it has other uh, features that some other uh, instant messaging solutions are lacking. Um, so you can actually um, build a modern um, instant messaging client based on XMPP. Um, but it requires uh, a compliant server, as I would say. Um, because remember, a lot of the uh, modern extensions uh, came to life in the last five years or so. So if you are using a server that hasn't been updated in those five years, uh, then you're better, better out of luck and your um, experience will be worse. Conversations will still be able to connect, but a lot of the modern stuff are like uh, fast switches between Wi-Fi and 3G or uh, those batteries optimizations won't work very well. Um, this is especially problematic because a lot of the um, servers in uh, those federated ecosystem are run by volunteers and volunteers kind of tend to set it up once and then forget about it or lose interest and then yeah you have this, uh, this problem of a, f a fragmented ecosystem um, where um, you have outdated servers that don't support those latest extensions and are a good solution to that, or at least part of the solution, is to make the problem uh, visible. Uh, so there are things like the compliance tester. You can find it if you Google for XMPP compliance tester or go to conversations IM slash compliance. And that can connect to server and check if that server uh, supports all the latest extensions. And then those re results can be rendered in a table where uh, green says a server supports something and uh, red means a server doesn't and uh, grace because the tests are outdated, we don't have that information. Um, anyway, this uh, serves two functions and the, in that it helps um, newcomers to find and pick a good server that's up to the uh, latest uh, 
developments and are for, for, for server operators to test their own server and figure out if their server is um, compatible or compliant, as I would call it. Um, so why did I do all that? Um, well, from a user perspective, I want to provide uh, um, provider independent um, instant messaging. So you don't have to uh, rely on these monopolies and are not, um, yeah. I mean, with WhatsApp, you kind of have this problem, say, if they change something, then you are, are stuck with them and you can't, can't do anything about it. And in a federated ecosystem where you have the uh, free choice of a server and client, then when a client develops into a direction you don't like, you just pick a different client. Or if they are open source, like fork it and uh, go a different direction. Uh, same as the, with the providers. If a prov provider shuts down their, their services or, uh, I don't know, implements a new privacy policy and you don't like that, you can pick a different provider but still use your favorite client with that. Um, but I also wanted to demonstrate a different thing. And that is, I wanted to show other developers uh, that XMPP is still a viable solution and you can uh, create new things based on an already established protocol. I mean, if you look at um, a lot of the instant messaging solutions out there, especially at some of the open source solutions out there, there's virtually no reason why they wouldn't be able to use XMPP. If they have a huge development team and are um, developing a new uh, chat client, um, why would they create a new protocol? They could just as well use XMPP. And like especially in the developer uh, community, um, XMPP for a very long time was uh, kind of, I know, had a bad reputation. And yeah, part of my goal was to uh, change that reputation and to show developers, you basically, that yeah, XMPP is still a pretty good protocol. Um, yeah, how to get started with um, XMPP? Um, well, from a user perspective, you first need a client. So on Android, uh, that can be conversations. Uh, on Windows and Linux, the most advanced client is uh, Gadrim, and uh, for iOS, yes, Chat Secure. Um, I have to give the note that. Uh, some of those clients on other platforms that are not conversations, that are not the client I just showed you, might not be as polished as conversations, but they still kind of get the job done. And yeah, those are the clients I recommend to, to newcomers, but of course there are countless of other clients. So depending on what platform you're using, if you're into command line tools, um, there will most definitely be a client that kind of uh, suits your needs. Um, and yeah, for developers, um, there are XMPP libraries in almost um, any um, stack or platform. Um, I didn't want to list them all, but if you're uh, looking for an XMPP library in a certain language, you can uh, ask me later and I can probably give you a recommendation. Uh, and yeah, you also need a server and there are a couple of pretty good uh, servers. There are, for example, Prosody, which is written in Lua, which is, if you want to do development on the server side as well, uh, sets a very low entrance barrier because Lua is a pretty easy um, programming language. Um, but if you want something pretty mature and don't want to do any um, uh, server side development, I recommend eJabbD because that's really stable and that's what we run on our. Uh, Conversations that I am XMPP server as well. All right, that's it, and uh, thank you for your attention. And are there any questions? Are there any cons of using XMPP? Cons or clients? Yeah, cons. Because you mentioned a lot of good stuff about it. Are there any cons? Okay. Um, well. I'd say you have, if you r want to use it really seriously, you have to gain a lot of knowledge. It's not a very accessible or easy protocol. Um, I mean, getting from like logging in and sending your first message is easy. 
But then there are some kind of cave cuts if, if you want to make it reliable on mobile or if you want uh, group messages uh, to work. Then, yeah, this is, it's a steep learning curve. You have to learn a lot of things. But my argument is that or even though it's a steep learning curve, it's, in the end, it's still easier than coming up with your entirely new protocol for it. Yeah. OK, another question? How does this compare? How does the SMTP compare to the non federated signal, signal protocol? Like, I see like they both have encryption, this and that. And, for, and companies like WhatsApp and Google are using it, are using signal protocol <laughs> instead of SMTP. OK, uh, the question was, how does it compare to signal or the signal protocol? Um, that kind of depends on what you mean by the signal protocol. If you're talking about the encryption, then uh, coincidentally, it uses the exactly the same end-to-end -end encryption. Um, like if we go a few s slides back, uh, that's the cute OMIMO, and OMIMO is the name of the end-to-end -end encryption in, um, in Jabber. And it uses the same uh, crypto primitives as Signal. So from a security standpoint, it's kind of equal. And we are basically gaining from their work because we are, at least in conversations, are using the exact same labor library. Um, but if you're not talking about end-to-end -end encryption, uh, but like speaking about Signal a as a messenger, then the uh, most important difference is that um, that it's federated, uh, that you can like interchange your client. I mean, if if, if Signal, for example, uh, changes to a pink color scheme tomorrow, you could fork the app because it's open source. But uh, the company behind Signal won't allow you to connect to their servers um, with your forked app. Um, so um, yeah. The, the, the server of Signal is open source as well, and then you can set up your own server, but then you're basically the only user on that server and couldn't, be, or couldn't communicate with anyone else. So in what scenarios would I be using XMPP over Signal protocol, and what scenario should I be using Signal protocol over XMPP? Uh, are you talking from a developer or from a user perspective? Uh, developer perspective. Like, which, in which scenario? Should I use XMTP over signal protocol? And which scenario should I even use signal protocol over XMTP? Because they are both quite similar. Um, if you're actually talking about uh, the communication between the client and the server, between um, uh, like the signal client and the signal server, I don't actually know a lot about that protocol. Um, so I don't have that information. Um, but I don't know if anyone else besides Signal using that protocol. I don't even know if it's like properly documented or anything. So um, I'm not going to say it's a bad protocol or anything, but uh, if you're using XMPP, there will definitely be more libraries and more resources online that are going to uh, help you get started with that protocol. Mm -hmm. so I think the main difference is it's you can yeah. have multiple servers and they can still talk to each other. The sign is not possible. This, this is the example is more of email. So the company can have your own server. You can still talk with other servers. Is, is there a way to uh, get like non-federated like peer-to-peer -peer communication going amongst the clients? Uh, so the question was if there's a way to get peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication uh, going across clients. Um, some things like large file transfers are already peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, then XMPP has a built-in like SIP-like signaling mechanism um, where our two clients can basically say, hey, I'm going to listen on that IP with that port, and you can send me a file or establish a video call to that IP or communication. But that's not like uh, the normal protocol, you wouldn't use peer-to-peer -to, -peer to send text messages, but only for like larger files or like be pretty inefficient if you redirect that over the server. Um, so idea, idea is like all of the major chat system or instant messaging system should be peer-to-peer -peer communication. Yeah. So that's why like the central server and the communication goes via it. 
Yeah, everything goes over your server, like yeah. your ho own home server, what's in your domain, and then it goes to the recipient server and from there to uh, the recipient's clients. It's not a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. There are other clients or systems who do that better than XMPP. Okay, no more questions? So thank you again for your attention. <laughs>